Hi, YouTube world. Today we're answering a question from Amore, and Amore's had several questions that uh, they've asked uh, the last couple days. And unfortunately, I can't provide complete and full training on YouTube. It is kind of a limited platform. Head on over to our website. It's the number four y-o-u-r-c-n-a.com and we actually have an online course that covers everything in depth so it's me that created the course so all of my lessons all of my instructional material everything is in there and it'll answer all the questions but this one in particular i wanted to take a second and address because this is a question that comes up quite frequently in my training so it's one that i kind of wanted to stop and actually address in video format on this comment so the question is once you document document do you have or do you have to hand that clipboard over to the evaluator and the second thing is when do you actually document so there's there's same type of question but two different parts to it so first I'm going to um, address the evaluator part so the first thing we have to understand is during the exam, the exam is about you and the patient. It is not about the evaluator. You're not going to talk to the evaluator. You're not going to address them. You're not going to look at them for feedback. There should be no communication between you and the evaluator during the test. Um, everything needs to be between you and the patient. They are nothing more than an observer with this checklist in front of them, and they're going to check off each step as you do it. So that is their role. They are not there to really kind of um, help you or accept things from you. That's not their role. So for the test, you're simply going to document your reading, and then you're going to leave the form there on the clipboard, on the table, and the evaluator will collect it after your test is over. And they actually store that with your, your testing paperwork. Um, so they're actually not going to tell you, I got 81 for a pulse. What did you get? Or if you tell them, I got 76 for a pulse, they're not going to tell you what they, what they got. That's not their role. So this is strictly between you and the patient. So if you understand that and you understand how the test is structured, it really kind of helps you when you're you're going into the test. It's You're not going to talk to the evaluator. Now, the second part of this question is actually a little bit more in depth. And I have a whole lesson on this in my online program, but I'm going to break it down really, really quick for you. There are two thoughts of... Uh, of um, when to document. There are some people that are in the, the pen is always dirty camp. And there's some people that are in the pen is always clean camp. And if you ask 20 nurses, you'll get 30 opinions on this. Um, everybody has a different thought process. I personally, because that pen goes into my pocket, it goes in and out of patients rooms. It goes home with me at the end of the day. I do not touch pens until I have clean hands. So for me, all documentation is done after hand washing. That's what you'll see in all of my trainings. That's what I teach. And that's what I practice. When I'm in a clinical setting, I will not touch my pen or anything that goes home with me at the end of the day unless I have clean hands. That includes my cell phone. And it, that's super important for infection control purposes. If uh, you get in the habit of always washing your hands before you touch something that's going to go home with you. It helps keep that pathogen transfer into your private environment. So that's kind of number one. But um, no matter which camp you're in, stick to it. Don't be crossing back and forth. You need to pick a side, north or south, and stick with it. So if you are the, the type of person that considers your pen always dirty, that's fine. Just never, ever, ever touch that dirty hand, that dirty pen with clean hands because you will recontaminate yourself. So as long as you have a clear-cut idea of clean or dirty and stick to it, that'll uh, serve the purposes for the test. But I want you to think about that from an infection control standpoint and, and make the best decision for you and the setting you're in. Now, if I'm working in a microbiology lab, that pen is not going to go home with me. That pen will always be dirty. It'll be on the counter. It'll only be touched when I have gloves on because I'll have to write down things as I'm performing tests. So if I'm working in a microbiology lab, that pen is always dirty. If I'm working in a clinical setting with patients and I'm going in and out of rooms, that pen will always be clean. So some of this is going to depend on your setting as well. Just pick one and stick with it. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But um, for the test, for my training, you're going to do your opening. You're going to count the pulse. You're going to do your entire closing, including washing your hands, and then document at the end. Once you're happy with your skill, then you'll tell the evaluator your skill is done, leaving the, the paper on the table, and they'll collect it after. So I hope this helped um, clear up that um 
confusion that you had about this. And uh, I, I strongly suggest that you go over to my website, check out the free resources I have over there. We've got a ton of training that's not over here on YouTube that will answer a lot of the questions you have and get you fully prepared for the test. Thanks for the comment and best of luck.